Hello and welcome to DIY Speed Garage. My name is Sammy and uh, welcome back guys uh, to my subscribers from back in the day. Sorry I've been away for a while and um, yeah I'm back now since my last video uh, last year uh, towards the end of uh, November I uh, went out of the country. I went to Europe. I traveled a little bit and um, had a little vacation then I came back here you know there was the holidays yeah I've just been busy I got the COVID and that's why I haven't made any videos but that doesn't mean I haven't done any work uh, on my cars and uh, on the GX build so um, I'm glad to be back and I'm glad you guys you know stayed with me and uh, yeah, I'm going to show you guys around what I've done with my GX. I bought a few new cars. So, come on guys, let me show you. All right, my wonderful viewers and subscribers. If you don't notice anything new, well, here you go. I put on a nice snorkel. It's a no brand Chinese snorkel. That is pretty much identical to your brand name snorkels. And I bought this for less than $140. Maybe it was $120. So, yeah. I'll try and leave some links for you guys. But, yeah, this is uh, for a Toyota Prado. And as you can see, it fits just great. The door opens just fine it attaches right here to the a pillar you could use a better clamp because right here there's a little rust so just get a nicer clamp I'm, I'm gonna do that the supplied one is not good and you guys yeah, it fits really nice. Got a nice little uh, extra growl now. Whenever the car, uh, whenever the car accelerates, I also put in a K&N filter in here, so now you can really hear the V8. Um, what else have I done on the exterior? I added a nice little slider to the back. A slider with a recovery point. And it is made by a company called Supreme Suspensions. So they kind of have their name engraved into this right here. Their brand. And yeah, it's a pretty big slider. As you can see, it doesn't stick out too much. So, yeah, pretty good two-in-one slider and recovery point. Um, I've added this nice little mini light bar to the rear. As you can see. Um, and now everything is wired and it has power. I've connected everything to my ARB links switch system accessory system uh i did not diy it because i was short for time i also didn't diy the snorkel i had a really cool company down in um daytona install everything i'll uh Leave a link in the description. It's called Destination 4x4s and more. Uh, let's go ahead inside and I'll show you guys how you operate all of these lights, these little auxiliary lights on the side. Oh, I also added these nice little grab handles. They are from uh, Prinsu as well. Um, you can actually add little pod lights right here if you want. 
and take this plate out. But since I have these, I didn't get them. So let me show you guys. This is where my switch is for all of my accessory lighting and power stuff. It mounts right here. And you're asking, well, where's the switch? Well, you guys, the switch is right here. This is my Air B Links. Basically, it connects through the Bluetooth to the Air B Links box, which sits behind that seat right there. And I'll show you in a minute. This is a magnetic mount. Basically, put it on here. And here we go. So, I have driver side little FUD lights, passenger side, the rear light bar, the front two light bars, and I also added a KDSS disconnect on the vehicle. Um, I can also control my ARB fridge from here as you can see right now it's in standby it's giving me the temperature inside the fridge the voltage at the fridge and right now I can power on the fridge all I have to do is tap on this and set it to fridge mode or freezer mode so if I tap this now you'll see it's from idle it'll go to operating you see now it's showing as running when I set it to fridge and if I want uh, as you can see the voltage also dropped when it switched on and now I can put it back in standby mode so yeah I can control my ARB fridge all my lighting my uh, KDSS and I can add I have space for one more accessory for example a uh, a rear locker or an air compressor there's more stuff I can add and all of my accessories are powered by my lithium battery and uh, yeah let me show you guys how this works this is basically wireless so I don't have to be inside the vehicle so if I want to switch on these little side lights I hit the driver floodlights see that all right if I want to switch on my light bars There we go. If I want to switch on my rear light bar. There we go. And the passenger side little lights. There we go. And also, I can disable the KDSS from here. Um, trust me, it's not fun to drive with the KDSS disabled when you're doing corners or higher speed turns. The car totally starts to lean. And yeah, it's scary. So only use it for off-road, um, gravel roads, stuff like that. Um, I also added a front camera and I'll show you now. And it's integrated into my, um, Grom audio. I had to buy a little, uh, a little front camera pigtail connector thing 
So here is my switch. I don't know if you can see that. It says front camera. Hold on, let me put on the lights. It's illuminated as well. It's a custom switch. There we go. So once I press that button, we should see the front view. And now I press the switch and we're seeing the front view. So, and this also gets a little bit brighter whenever you enable the switch. So when you switch it off, it gets a little dimmer. So that's how you know it's switched on. Now, I'm gonna admit, I'm not good at relays. I'm not good at wiring stuff. So the front camera and the ARB link system was done by professionals at Destinations 4x4 and more. But yeah, I've got like a bunch of relays here on the left side, driver's side in the engine bay. And then let me show you how my ARB links uh, box looks like. It's connect, uh, the, the thing that this is connected to. So stay with me guys. Oh yeah, I almost forgot to show you guys where my front facing camera is. It's right there. Under the Lexus logo. So I will uh, add a link for this camera in a video description if you guys are interested. I'll add a link to the ARB link system and uh, I'll see what other links I can find. Maybe my rear light bar and all that good stuff. All right, so here is where I have my ARB links box. Everything comes into here. It's basically, you know, just one set of wires. And then uh, this is how we cleaned it up. This is the box. I still got space over here. I can install my um, power inverter if I want to. I'm not sure if I've shown you guys all my power stuff over here. Let me show you real quick. All right, so my lithium ion battery, it's a battle born. I have a strap down with just a soft little strap right here. Um, it doesn't move too much because I put a rubber padding on the bottom just like I had here on top. So the battery's pretty secure. Um, this right here is my um, Red Arc BCDC charger. It's a 12 uh, 25. This is my little um, fuse panel. As you can see, I have my my fridge, uh, my USB ports, my 12 volt socket, and I have on this one, which I forgot to label. This is the ARB. Um, I've got a battery monitor, also shunt right here. And then I have a negative uh, terminal right here. Everything is connected to this. And then basically all of this runs down. Go to the front, some goes to the front, some goes to the back. But you get the point. And um, I don't know if I showed you guys my my battery monitor. Did I or did I not? I don't remember. But anyways, here's my battery monitor. It's a Victron Energy uh, BMV712 Smart. It's the one with the Bluetooth. And yeah, it's, it's nice. It's wireless. I can check it from my phone. It's got the app. 
and then I've got my uh, 12 volt regular sockets here that are always powered on as you can see since they're illuminated they're always powered on and I also have USB sockets right here they're the quick charge ones they can be powered on and off they have a little button right here on the side I usually keep those off and then right here I've got another quick charge um, socket with a battery voltage uh, display I think yeah so when you switch it on it, it displays the battery voltage but yeah so in total I've got four quick charge 3.0 USB sockets and I've got two of the 12 volt regular sockets and this is how it's mounted in here and I got my fridge and yeah that's that's all I've got for updates for now however I do have something else that I'll be doing DIY for sure and I'm gonna show you guys what that is in just a second so stay tuned and I'll show you the cool little upgrades that I have in mind so let's go ahead they're over there on the table almost forgot I also got the wife this sweet little Audi A4 Quattro it's the 2019 and I haven't done any mods to it except for stage 2 ECU tuning it's got the unitronic and uh, yeah this thing makes a lot of power I think it's like around a four second car zero to 60 really sweet so yeah that also happened this happened just before my trip to Europe which was in uh, November so oh man look at that GX right there creeping around around the corner just creeping around hiding in plain sight and there's that beautiful CDI in the background. But yeah, I got the wife this sweet little Audi A4. I have added some upgrades to it via electronics. I got the Rostec uh, VACCOM thing and I've added the lane keep assist and all that good stuff to it. Automatic high beams. Audi wants to charge you an arm and a leg in order for you to get these features but some of these features you already got them you just gotta activate them anyways and then I also bought that sweet 2012 Passat TDI SEL got a really good deal on it um, added a nice backup camera to it can't believe you didn't come with a backup camera in 2012 uh, and it is the, the top spec, top trim level Passat, so I'm not sure why it didn't come with a backup camera. But I added it, and it wasn't too bad. And then I also activated it once installed via the VAGCOM. I replaced the headlights because uh, they were kind of cloudy and everything. But yeah, I get like 37 miles per gallon with that TDI I wish they still made diesels I mean I, I wish they still imported diesels to the US I think these were made in Mexico or something but yeah they don't they don't make diesels anymore for the US unfortunately but yeah that's also some of the reasons and some of the things that have happened while I was away oh by the way I did replace my little V8 badges. They were chrome before, so I got nice little black ones because I'm probably gonna black out a lot of the trim, the chrome stuff. Um, and I have something, speaking of, of blacking out, uh, some of you may know the 2022 
Lexus GX comes in a black line version. Well, I saw a nice little, a nice little uh, Easter egg on the front, right here on the fog light trims. That looks really cool on the black line, and I bought those trims. I've been waiting for a while because I couldn't find the part number because Lexus uh, dealers hadn't updated their um, 2022 parts uh, listings. So finally, about two weeks ago, I checked and they had the 2022 parts lists available. So here you go, guys. This is what I'm going to upgrade. This is, uh, you know, just a visual upgrade this is from the black line gx the 2022 and basically it has these nice little i don't know what they are but i got these and yeah these are gonna look way better i'll put up a picture right now so you guys can see um but anyways I got the left one, I got the right one. I got all the parts for it, the screws and everything. I'm gonna do that in the next video, which is going to be pretty much the day after I post this video. So make sure you tune back in. And uh, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe and turn on your notification so you can uh, get that video of me installing these things. What else do we have? Oh, what is this? Hmm. You ask what this is? All right, you guys. I'll tell you. This is second row power coming to a Lexus near you, my friends. I've been meaning to do this for a while. Here you go, you guys. This is the second row uh, panel that's right behind the front row armrest this is where my AC control is and this is where I'm going to install my USB charger that I found I got lucky found it on eBay really cheap because new ones are a little expensive but I'll still leave links in the next video so we got USB A and USB C and that will go in here. I've been looking for this solution for a while. I just kept forgetting to do it. So finally have it and it's going to be in the next video. I'm going to do this in the next video and the little trims, little fog light trims in the next video. I also bought the little pigtails and the connector that goes into this USB charger. Um, they are right in here. They're called terminal repair wires or whatever. They plug those terminal repair wires plug into this little plug, which plugs into this switch. And then I'm most likely going to wire this to my auxiliary battery the lithium battery in the back so it'll be constantly powered on um but we'll see we'll see if i haven't decided for sure yet so what else do i have oh i got steel braided brake lines these are extended ones i got on um Metal Tech 4x4. These are extended rear stainless steel braided lines for the rear brakes. And those are for the front. They're not extended, but they are stainless steel. They are braided. So, why do I need those? Basically, I got another inch of lift just from the tires themselves. And then I have another almost two and a half inch or probably exactly two and a half inches of lift from the suspension lift so that's like three and a half inches that the GX is taller in the rear so I figured 
let me get extended um you know brake lines for the rear because you know i guess the three inches might you know be just enough to cause some damage to the stock brake lines so i figured let me let me get the stainless steel extended ones and then on the front you know i haven't you know dropped anything or anything so the suspension travel should be you know about the same so i didn't get any extended ones for the front um but yeah that's it guys for now i just wanted to update you all um on what's been going on why i haven't made any videos um like i said i had the covid traveled to europe i traveled to europe before i got the covid so i got the covid here stateside it was the omicron Omic omicron whatever the hell it wasn't too bad and uh you know holidays and all that stuff so but yeah guys i'm glad you stuck with me um all my old subscribers thank you to my new subscribers and um make sure you check me out in 24 hours after you see this video um I am going to install the fog light trims and I'm going to install the uh, second row USB power. So stay with me guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.